I'm, I'm home on the couch with little Harley Quinn next to me. And Stacy says, well, what the fuck is this fucking idiot doing? I said, well, all right. You knew, and you knew I was nowhere near around. And well, that's me. usually an opening for somebody who's pissed her off. And she said, listen to what Mike Bucci just put on my Facebook. <laughs> and she read this to me. And she said, what the fuck is – and now, for one thing, I know this is, comes as a shock to everybody, but – uh, the, Stacey, the queen does not listen to, uh, the experience, nor the 605, nor the bowling alley, nor any other podcast what, for that. What matter. a shock that is. And what a shock there. So she said, what the fuck is this fucking idiot talking about? Because she had no idea, but uh-huh. she says, listen this and reads it to me. And she got hot. And I, and Brian, you know, I don't have the, the, the Facebook thing there, but you have the Facebook thing where you can, so I've, I, and I know you're, your buds with Donnie B, and I, I like Donnie B, but but this was not Donnie B. This was Mike B. Yeah. Would you just read real quick because you you've got it there? What well, Donnie, Donnie Mike, B was a prick to me too. Let's get that. Well, is it, all right. Let's hold not, on. Let's, not let's as talk big about a prick. Let's talk about one prick at a time here. <laughs> we just talked about your prick. Now we're talking <laughs> about another prick. That's only fair. But Brian, would you read what this? horrible human being this simon legree this ebenezer scrooge this hard-hearted compassionless no good son of a bitch would put on someone's facebook about on someone eve. on on christmas eve can you just read this real quick this is mike bucci talking uh, about me and kenny bowling i will read this i can't believe this is over 50 dollars. um <laughs> yo hope you're good but i gotta tell you I finally got around to listening to Jimmy and Kenny's whole show from a bit back. And the fact that JC gave him a platform and took part in what in that was disappointing, insulting, and unbelievable. I've always held JC in the highest regard and defended him to everyone. There was no reason on earth for Jimmy to entertain that shit on a podcast. (laughs) Kenny is a fat fucking useless cunt pedophile who now has an enemy for this life and the next <laughs> i won't rest until he's in the grave which will hopefully be soon oh. after hearing that i doubt i'll ever speak to jimmy again i can't shake his hand and look him in the eye after knowing he condoned his piece of shit friend's actions fuck it oh. now sounds, that sounds is good. what that is what he wrote on Stacy's <laughs> Facebook page. Your, 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 your lovely wife, your lovely wife, to disturb her with his falderall, to to attempt to disturb <laughs> me with his falderall, Attempted. and to wish death on somebody <laughs> currently primarily, in the primarily, primarily over a bullshit fifty dollar bet Prim- after just, he's eaten thousands of dollars of free food well, from me. And, and, well, over the last sixteen years, but no, wait a minute. And because we did expose some of some of his probably more embarrassing Weaker moments points. on on yeah. the podcast, uh, and, we both but, chimed in. And 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 the point is, and the, the 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 point here is that you were clinging to life as it was at the exact same time, and he probably knew that. He probably knew. Yeah, that. I mean, I he had he, to have known. He had to have known. But to say something like that and expect because as, as we said at the time. For one thing, we exposed that that he was a Trump. He really was because the last time I saw him, and, and I said, "Why down. are you telling Kenny? Why are you telling Kenny that you're he believes that you're really stupid enough to support Donald Trump?" And he, ah, oh, I'm just winding him up or whatever. But he wouldn't admit to me, but he he's, really he's was. He's yanking my chain. He's yanking my chain. And so I, f- I saw no reason uh, not to expose uh, uh, Mike Bucci, Nova, Simon Dean for the Trump supporter that he was. As well as the fact that he was fucking with you, and th- I hate to tell you, Nova, but in, in a difference of platforms, you can can put it stuff on Facebook all you want, but I'm broadcasting it to hundreds of thousands of people here. Don't fuck with the like I've had to tell Brock Lesnar this in the past. Don't fuck with the fat man because he's my friend, and I'm the only one that gets to wish death and destruction on him. I'm the only one to hope that I live to see him in the grave. You can't do it. That's reserved for me. That sounds so fair to me. So you stay out of this, asshole. So what I'm telling <laughs> Good God. But here's here's the problem now. The all. problem is that now he's he's just he's brought more disgrace on himself because now oh my people God. are flooding oh. 
the social media, Flooded. Their, Flooded the Facebook, the and they're, what a fucking prick this guy is. Yeah. And 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 uh, I, you know, I'm I'm sorry that you're you're all so pissed at me because we we were having some fun on the program, but but just uh, having a little lighthearted fun. Always ju- just talked about the time that you know. It, it, and here's the thing: <laughs> I've never said Nova wasn't a great wrestler here in OVW because no, no. when he came in, I pushed him immediately, and he and and Cena and you guys had some great matches, and mm-hmm. and uh, I I thought that he always did good, whether as a heel or a babyface, he always worked hard. He was he was there on time. He came up with his own shit. He had a degree of experience uh, ahead of most of the guys, so he became a, a locker room leader. And then they they took him up there and gave him that fucking stupid gimmick, and that killed the whole fucking deal. So then mm-hmm. they gave him a second chance. Because nobody could have carried that off. I'm sorry. It's fucking ridiculous. And they give him a second chance at working in the office. And suddenly he thinks he's, he's the second coming of Toots Mont. Yeah. And, and that went sideways. Yeah. So, and now, Speak the truth. Uh, and now he's apparently calling me on the phone. Here. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. He's got your he's- number. Yeah, well, there, that's it's it's not him. But anyway, uh, uh, what a horrible person! I didn't even wish death on Vince Russo on Christmas I, I, Eve. I did, not on Christmas Eve. Not did. publicly, I didn't. I didn't no, actually. Not, not, not publicly it. and not on Christmas it's just, Eve. It's, it's a quiet little prayer that I say at the fireside every you every. You kind of got to back down a little bit, uh, and you and I, let's face it, not the most religious people that ever were ever born. But even we pay a little homage to people on Christmas Eve and not wish them death. Yes, I, I and, generally. And as I, you know, Tim Ash is the person I hated more than anybody on planet Earth. Never you, once you, wished him dead, unless I was able to physically do it by my own hands. No I remember. Ever, I remember you wanted to kill him. Yeah, but I just, but me, I didn't just wouldn't want it to happen. I didn't want him dying a car wreck. And but one thing I do believe in, Jimmy, and you know this, I believe in karma. And here's one thing I'm going to send out to you, Nova, because I know you're listening. And I know you listen to this show repeatedly because you chimed in the day after the show, making calls, begging Jimmy to put you on the show so that you could rebuke what we had said about you. Well, the only thing we said was the God's honest truth. We never made shit up, and a lot of it was testimony from your own personal friends, Rick Ratchet, Dennis Corley's son, various others who said, well, God damn, he's been a mooch his entire life. I can't believe he's having a problem with this. He never once paid a toll. He never once chipped in on gas. He would steal food from, and silverware from restaurants. He would he would get to the people he rode with to buy his meals, him and Donnie both. Um, they were the Moochie Brothers. That's what they were known as. Well, you know, I have a bit of a reputation. I have a reputation as a guy that, you know. Do you I mean, think there's some my... professional jealousy, professional jealousy between you and him and that he has seen you, you with a better setup and I'll, doing I'll, it better? I'll, I'll tell you. Here he was on worldwide television. How long was he up there with that Simon Dean gimmick? Do you know? Oh, God, it seemed like years, didn't it? It seemed like four or five years, but I don't think it was that long. But he no. was up there for quite some time, and then he was in the office for, for quite some time, longer than he should have been. And so he had all this worldwide attention and worldwide fame, and he ain't got hardly fan one. He ain't got a hookup in this town anywhere. He invited me to his home several months ago. Only if I would pull over at Raising Cane's Chicken, where I'm connected with management there, and wanted me to pick up enough food to feed eight people, including my good friend Aaron the Idol Stevens. And once I realized he was just using me for free food, that was kind of the of the, the straw that broke the camel's back. So he was no longer you, you invited to You did this to on to... a regular basis, right? Every fucking week. And I, from that point, remember he tried to horn in on mine and yours DVD. Because he wanted a payday, and he wanted free. I food. remember he, he wanted to come and guest star at, the, at my my yeah. buffet with Austin at the Golden now, Corral. What is, what is he going to add to me and you? We already knew you and I were going well, overtime. He, he could have added something to me since you were so sick that day, as it turned well, out. Well, thank, thank God the ever. prince was there and put the show on his back and carried the whole show for you. Oh, for heaven's sake! So the only thing he carried God. was plates from the buffet table. But nevertheless, they weren't coming to my table, were they? We're in the process of knocking Bucci here, so get yeah, back on. So, so he tried to horn in on that, and I politely as I could told him that he wasn't needed, and I think that hurt his feelings. And then he had been banned from eating with me, which I didn't tell him. We just didn't invite him anymore. And then uh, as we talked on the last show, he horned in with Idol when he knew we had invited Idol to dinner. 
uh, Damian Sandow, for those of you that follow WWE, all five of you. And uh, he horned in on that. And then I invited him to Roosters because I wasn't going to pick up food for eight people for fucking Mike Bushy. And I'll be goddamn if he didn't horn in on that, too. So now I had to start secretly inviting Idol and telling him to show up. And he oh, you wait a minute. You had, to, you had to do the old disinclude but don't tell to, yeah. to Mike Bucci. Yeah. And uh, because the favor, if the favor had come back, and I was the first to say, yeah, he bought my bootleg movies. He bought my, my headphones. He bought earbuds. He bought uh, various other items that I sold. But... You know, that don't, he still got a free meal out of the deal for him and his daughter and for a long time his wife and his banking friend Steve, who's actually a good guy who eventually moved to Texas, probably to get away from fucking Nova. Well, but, that's what, um, usually why people move to Texas. That's, that's why anybody would go to Texas. So, you know, I was feeding him and two, three, four of his friends for fucking 12 out of 16 years, but yet it never came back. Even though he bragged that he had six figures in the bank and he had this great job, and he was done with the wrestling business, and people like like you, and then, yeah, you. Wait a minute, you done with the wrestling simple. business? I thought yeah. he was, well, I, well, seen, no, this, I thought he was making appearances recently, you told well, me. Well, he has been. He even worked for fucking Ian Rotten, which told oh, me no. he no fucking more. Yeah, what? yeah. he, he claims Ian paying him $300, but I've heard from, from, from reliable sources it was more like 75 he would have worked for Ian Reddick. You, know, you, 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 know you have to be able to look at yourself in the mirror, man. You, you know what his excuse was here? Because I looked at him like he had a smoking turd in his mouth. And his answer to me was, well, Ian's never done anything to me. He's always been good to me. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah, Uncle Adolf was always good at Christmas yeah, to me. Yeah, Ad Adolf Hitler never hurt me. Why would I be upset at Adolf Hitler? Working, Why, working for Ian Rodden is like picking a turd up by the clean end. Yeah, Either Stalin, way, shit. Stalin was always cool with me. <laughs> I mean, that's what that's that's what that's saying. He knows what Ian did to the wrestling business over here in Kentucky, made it miserable for everybody, and now it's hard to get a quality show going in Indiana because this stupid fuck has ruined about every place he's ever been. And then he goes over and works for him. Well, if you got six figures in the bank and now you're a big shot bank, well, he's a big shot banker. Well, he's been with three different banks in about six different months. So, um, but he well, we, we don't actually know what bankers do anyway, so you can't knock yeah. him for that. Well, he's, uh, I've, I guess he's basically a glorified bank teller out of some bank out in Kroger on Dixie Highway because your son, little Jimmy LeBeau, ran into him. And uh, he's a bank manager. He out is there. not my son. Brian Zane is my son. I mean, Brian Zane is not my son. Well, it hadn't been proven yet, but little Jimmy LeBeau is not my son, by the way. Well, we got tested to say otherwise, but that's another show. But anyway, uh -huh. well, regardless of what this this horrible, horrible situation now. But what, has, is it, what does it take to be a bank manager at a grocery store? There's you and a teller. What are you managing? I don't have any idea. So I even if he is the manager, big fucking deal, and how much do they pay people for that? Can't well, who do you ever pay? Well, apparently us. he's desperate because he needs his $50 real bad. So what we did, and I made this promise on the Bowen Alley, we didn't give him 50 bucks. I offered it to Donnie. Uh, apparently Donnie needed $50 because he was bitching and talking bad about me on Facebook. Said that I was a low-life piece of shit and a mooch and a con man. Well, maybe some of those, but not all. Not and all, not, not all at the same time. But I couldn't believe Donnie turned on me. I thought he was the classy one of the two, but it turned out he was as big a mooch and uh, as, as as Nova was. So uh, where was I going with this? I was going somewhere. I don't there. have any idea. Oh, so oh, the fifty dollars. Yeah. $50. So so I was going to send the fifty dollars to Donnie, being as he was all worked up. As I ain't going to give it to Nova, but I'll send it to you, Donnie. Well, it then turns out that Donnie, who's a cop uh, in New Jersey, there's an honor. And uh, apparently he'd won some money off, off a lottery ticket. Now, I don't know if it was one of the big ones or if he won a hundred grand or whatever, but I whatever, think we'd he did, heard. whatever he did, he won enough money to take a cruise. And he was bragging that, uh, uh, that he wasn't able to hear my show because he was away on a cruise. That's what he was bragging about. But apparently he heard, oh, he didn't vote. I'm sorry. I tell the story wrong. He didn't vote because he was away on a cruise. He hadn't heard of the absentee ballot. So maybe they I don't find have that those. hard to believe. But an yeah, maybe they don't. Oh, maybe man. they don't have. Maybe they don't have those in New Jersey. I'm not sure. So then, apparently, this has been building up on him ever since we did the show. And then Christmas Eve, he couldn't take it anymore. So he writes poor little, poor little Stacy. Sin, uh, you guys know her from the OVW show years ago, and bitches to her and wishes me dead. Now she's bound to know 
he's bound to know that Stacy and I, over a period of time, have put aside some of our differences and that we actually kind of get along these days. Well, and the dumb he's... fuck's also bound to know that she's going to be sitting next to me when she reads it, and I'm going to be well, cranky just making her cranky on Christmas Eve, Mike, you, you dumb you, fuck. You, Is you that think the, he would figure know, that out? At this point, that ain't the way to get over with me, you dumb fuck. You think fuck. he would figure it out. So he wishes me dead uh, while I'm laying in a hospital bed, and let's face it, for, and, and Jimmy, will, Jimmy will back me up on this, Two or three of these days, it didn't look good for me. And I probably was clinging to a deathbed, to be honest with you. The doctors never tell me because they're going to make me negative, but they tell all my relatives, hey, you might not come out of here. So that's nice of them. And well, after, but oh, just, by the way, they're just trying to cheer your relatives up. Yeah, yeah that is worse. So after the catheter incidents, believe me, I think a wise man once said, I think his name was uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin. He said, give me liberty or give me death. Well, if they ever offer you the opportunity of give me a catheter or give me death, take death. Because that's what I'll take the next time. They ain't never going to be no damn wire. In that All right, let's, let's, not, let's not go back there again. Well, anyway, right. we just but, but to... even even with his wishes, even with the horrible things he said about me, wanting me in the grave, I don't wish that on you, Mike. I hope you live a long fucking time. I hope you live to be 199. Because I would like the opportunity for either me or my son, as soon as I get healthy, to slap the dog shit out of you every fucking time we see you. It might not be me for a while, but you've got my son horribly upset. You had to be saved that night because you're a candy ass. You're a pussy. You ain't never whipped anybody your whole fucking life. You're a phony fucking bad wrestler. That's what you are. My son is a legit tough guy. You once said you were going to shoot on my son. Well, you better have meant you're going to shoot my son because you couldn't whip him. And you wished his daddy dead on fucking Christmas Day. So you better pray to God he don't run into you. You better pray to God he don't come down to your fucking bank and pull you up behind your counter and beat the shit out of you down at Kroger for wishing his daddy dead. And don't think that when I get healthy that I won't be fully capable of handling it myself, too, at damn near age 60. You're a fucking pussy, Mike. And I'm calling you out, you little piece of shit. You want me dead so bad. You know exactly where I live. You live four miles from me. Come and look me up. Come and look me up, because I think in the health I'm in right now, I'm fucking mad enough and pissed off enough that I could probably take your fucking ass, but I won't have to, because my son will fuck you up. He will fuck you up bad. I promise you that. So if you think you're such a tough motherfucker, come and take on the prince. He's waiting on you. He's dying, because I begged him not to go to your home, because you're a stupid fuck. We know where you live. We know what friends you got, which ain't many, according to Facebook. And all your friends that are chiming in telling me what a piece of shit you are. So if you're such a fucking tough guy and you want to whip somebody and you want to kill somebody, I will present you that opportunity. Show up any fucking time you like. There's your invitation, you fucking cocksucker. But I ain't going to wish you dead. I hope you live a long motherfucking time so we can whip your ass for now to eternity. And when the zombie apocalypse hits, I'll be right there waiting on you, you stupid motherfucker.